Now that we have a problem in the form of a graph, we can also start to use different tools. So we don't need generic tools anymore. A spreadsheet or Python are like a Swiss army knife. They can do anything you want. You can use them for budgeting or planning or for doing a bacon-like problem. But now we can use a very specialized tool for graphs, very much like the tongs you use to eat snails. They're very, very useful if you're eating snails, but they're pretty useless for eating anything else, like eating pasta or eating rice. They are very specialized tools. And this is also what the graph tool is about. And the graph tool that we are going to use is called Neo4j. And this is a graph database. The world or word already says it, is really used to store and analyze graphs. So if you download Neo4j, this is a freely available tool. You can just download it for many different platforms. And if you do that, and if you start it, this is what you will see. Just this little box, what do we do? So the first thing that we have to do is select a folder on our file system where we're going to save the database. Just an empty folder, no magic. You just select a folder and you hit start. And this is what you get, the green box with a link. And if you click it, you'll be taken to your web browser. Just a normal browser like Firefox or Chrome will start your normal browser and you will see this. That's it, this is Neo4j. So it's not immediately clear what you have to do here. First, let's start with get our bacon data into the database. So we go back to our spreadsheet and we have to save our spreadsheet as a CSV file, a comma separated value file. This is a format that Neo4j and many other tools can easily read. Maybe you've done this before, you just click save and you select the location where you want to save your CSV file. You enter a file name and then from the drop down list, the save as one, you select CSV. There we go, comma separated value. Oh, we have a dot too many. We remove the dot and we click save. And now we've saved only this worksheet can we save as a CSV. So Excel warns us, it says, I can only save one worksheet and you lose pivot tables. We know that, we are okay with it. We want to save it as a CSV file. So what we have now if we open the CSV file is this. This is how the CSV file looks like if you open it with Notepad or any, any other text editor. You have a first line that is the first column of the spreadsheet, in this case movie, and then you get one line for all of the lines in the spreadsheet and columns are separated, of course, with a comma because it's a comma separated value format. So we have this data, now we have to get this data into Neo4j. So let's go back to Neo4j, get our CSV file, there it is. And what we cannot do is just select the data and put it in. We cannot just co copy paste. We have to use a special command called load CSV. So we type that into Neo4j, load CSV from the location where I have just saved the, uh, the CSV file. And then for every line in the CSV file, we're going to perform a certain operation. So here's the location of the CSV file and we're going to open it as row. And this means that we are going to iterate over the spreadsheet, over the CSV file, and every line is called row. And this is very much like the for loop in Python, where we have an iterator i that first has the value one, and then two, and then three. This is also what happens to the row. So what are we going to do for each of the rows? We're going to create something that is a movie. We, we will create a movie and the name of the movie is row.movie. That's the first column, in this case, the only column of our CSV file. So we can run this by hitting the play button and then Neo4j says, okay, I have created four nodes. We don't really know yet what has happened, but something has happened because we have created four nodes. So what we can do now is get the notes out. And I'm not going to explain the entire syntax of this language. This language is called Cypher, by the way. I'm just going to show you a few things that you need to know for this example. But we will put links online to background material where you can learn all about Cypher. So how are we going to get the notes out? There's a special command called match, and that means looking for all the notes. So in this case, we say we match just a note n, any type of node and return that to us. And now we see the four nodes that we have entered into the database. We see they are movies and they have the labels that were in the CSV file. And we can change the layout a little bit. 
we can say that the labels need to be the name of the movie and we can play with the size of the notes. So now it's easier to see that we indeed have the four movies in our Neo4j database that were in our CSV file. They're right there. And what you also see is that this is a tool that's made for graphs. If I just say, give me everything that's in the database, the neutral, the normal form is not a list as you would get in a normal database. No, it are these little dots, the nodes in our database. And this shows us that we're really working with a graph database here, something that's optimized for thinking about nodes. Now what we also need to do in addition to the movies is get the actors in. And we can again use the load CSV command for that. And now we're not creating a movie, we are creating an actor. And we do that really by saying create an actor. We're not going to add a label, this is a type actor. No, we really say create an actor. And this sounds a little bit cryptic maybe, but let me show you how that looks like if I show you all the notes. Initially, all of them look gray, and you see that indeed some are an actor and some are a movie. But what we can do is again, we can play with the layout. We can say we want movies to be green, and then you see all the movie notes are now green. And we can do the same for actors. Let's say we want to actors to be pink. And now you can see that we really have two different types of notes in our database, movies and actors. So of course, the next step that we need to perform, now we have the movies and the actors in our database, is make the connection. So again, we have saved the third worksheet of our spreadsheet as a CSV file where we now have two columns, one that's called full name and one that is called movie. And again, we're using the match commando now. First, we load the CSV files. We know this by now as a row from the CSV file, but we're going to match each column, the first item with an actor and the second item with a movie. And this is how that looks like. So we say match. Yes, we say match. There it is, we say match. We are going to match and A is an actor. And what are we going to match it with? Well, the name, the full name of the actor has to be equal to the name that is in the row of our CSV file. So that's also called full name. So in the first case, the actor that we're going to make a connection for first is Kevin Bacon with the movie Crazy Stupid Love. So this first match line is going to search for the actor in the first line. And the second match that I'm making now is saying I'm matching movie and the name of the movie has to be equal to the movie column in my CSV file, the second column after the comma. So what these first two things do is find an actor and find a movie. So if I have those two, what I need to do is make a connection between them. And I do that with a create, just as I said, create an actor and create a movie. I'm now creating a link from A, the actor, to the movie, and I'm giving the connection a name. I'm naming it acted, so A acted in M, Kevin Bacon acted in Crazy Stupid Love. And if I execute this create, then again, Neo says, yeah, okay, I have created a bunch of relations. So let's have a look at how it actually is visualized. If I just use the same show me all nodes, then I get a graph instantaneously. So if I just put my data in and I say to Neo4j, give me the data, this is what I get. It's immediately visualized as a graph. And you can see, of course, we know this by now, Kevin Bacon has played in Crazy Stupid Love with Julianne Moore. It's all right there and it very much looks like the picture that we had in the previous video that we were drawing on the spreadsheet. We get a graph immediately. So we're almost there. We have the right representation now, but now, of course, we still want to perform the calculation of the Bacon number. So let me show you how that goes if you use Neo4j. So what we want to do is calculate a path through the graph, a number of steps like we did Delft, Rotterdam, Groningen, and now we want to have Kevin Bacon, Julianne Moore. So we're matching again, we're looking in the database, but now we're not looking for one node, we're looking for a path through the node from an actor with the name Kevin Bacon to another actor with no specific name, we don't know the name, and how does the pad have to look like? Well, it has to be two hops, an actor, a movie, another actor. 
And what do we want to return? If we have found such a path from Kevin Bacon to another actor, we would like to have the name of the other actor. And if we execute this, indeed, we get all the actors that have a Bacon number of two that are one hop away, or in this visualization, two hops away from Kevin Bacon. And we can do the same thing for everyone who has Bacon number three, because then we need four hops. It works, it's that easy to do it with Neo4j. The only problem that we have here is that Scarlett Johansson occurs twice because there are two ways that we can reach her from Kevin Bacon. And we can solve this with a very similar construct that we have used all the way back in the pivot table video, the this things. And if we add that, then we get only two actors with a Bacon number of three. So you see, it's just one line and then we get everyone with bacon number two, everyone with bacon number three, which is already pretty amazing, but we can do better than that. We can calculate all bacon numbers of everyone with just one line of, of cipher code. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, give me the shortest path. And this shortest path is not a function that I have defined. This is just a built-in function in cipher. So we're going to say, give me the shortest path from the node that matches Kevin Bacon. We've seen that in the previous queries as well. And what I want is only the star. So not two steps or four steps or 100 steps, any number of steps. We don't care. That's what the little star indicates. And what we want to have in return is, again, the name of the actor. And what we also want, because we have named this pad P, the length of the path. Ta-da! And now indeed we get Kevin Bacon has zero because the pad from him to him is zero. And people with Bacon number one, uh, Bacon number two have two hops and with Bacon number three have four hops. So we're almost there. We only want Kevin Bacon to have one and all the others to have two steps as one step. So if we divide it by two and add one, we have all Bacon numbers for everyone. It doesn't matter how long the path is in only one line of cipher. Isn't that cool? Remember that last week we needed like 25 array formulas for all of the actors and we still needed 20, 25 lines of Python and here we can do it in just one line of cipher. So don't get me wrong, this is not a Neo4j advertisement. I'm not saying that Neo4j is better than Python or is better than Excel. For some problems that are really graphy, Neo4j is a very good solution. But like the tongs for a snail, it's very specific. You can't use it for planning or budgeting. It's for one specific tool only. So what I hope you take away from this week and previous week videos is that sometimes you shouldn't run to your spreadsheet immediately. Of course, in the first six weeks, I showed you everything there is to know about spreadsheets, and you can do many, many things with them. But sometimes it's also a very good strategy to just step away from the spreadsheet, don't go to your computer, first think about the problem, go to the whiteboard, and sometimes you can use a tool that's very suited for a small part of your problem better. So if you ever need to calculate a Bacon number, now you know that Neo4j or another graph database might be a better solution than a spreadsheet.